Hi, so today's topic is on acute complications of diabetes mellitus, which is diabetic ketoacidosis. The acute complications of diabetes mellitus arise from events associated with hyperglycemia, which is diabetic ketoacidosis, and HHS, which is hyperosmolar hyperglycemic syndrome and hypoglycemia, also referred to as insulin reaction. Diabetic ketoacidosis is caused by a profound deficiency of insulin and is characterized by hyperglycemia, ketosis, acidosis, and dehydration. There is insulin deficiency and as a result, increase in the counter-regulatory hormone release. It is most likely to occur in people with type 1 diabetes, but may be seen in people with type 2 diabetes in conditions of severe illness or stress when the pancreas cannot meet this extra demand for insulin. The most common reason is infection. The, precipita the precipitating factors include illness and infection, inadequate insulin dosage, undiagnosed type 1 diabetes, poor self-management and neglect. Older patients who have secondary problems like infection, stroke, myocardial infarction, pneumonia and intestinal obstruction have higher mortality rates. This is the schematic representation of the pathophysiology of diabetic ketoacidosis. When the circulating supply of insulin is insufficient, Glucose cannot be properly used for energy. The body compensates by breaking down fat stores as a secondary source of fuels. Ketones are acidic byproducts of fat metabolism that can cause serious problems when they become excessive in the blood. Ketosis alters the pH balance, causing metabolic acidosis to develop. Ketonuria is a process that occurs when ketone bodies are excreted in the urine. During this process, electrolytes become depleted as cations are eliminated along with the anionic ketones in an attempt to maintain electrical neutrality. Insulin deficiency impairs protein synthesis and causes excessive protein degradation. This results in nitrogen losses from the tissues. Insulin deficiency also stimulates the production of glucose from amino acids from the proteins in the liver and leads to further hyperglycemia. Because there is a deficiency of insulin, the additional glucose cannot be used and the blood glucose level rises further. Hyperglycemia results in osmotic diuresis which leads to dehydration and electrolyte loss. If not treated, the patient will develop severe depletion of sodium, potassium, chloride, magnesium, and phosphate. Eventually, hypovolemia will ensue and be followed by shock. Renal failure, which may eventually occur from hypovolemic shock, causes the retention of ketones and glucose, and the acidosis progresses. Untreated, the patient becomes comatose as a result of dehydration, electrolyte imbalance and acidosis. If the condition is not treated, death is imminent. Clinical manifestations. Dehydration occurs in DKA with manifestations of poor skin turgor, dry mucous membranes, tachycardia, and orthostatic hypotension. Early symptoms may include lethargy and weakness. As the patient becomes severely dehydrated, the skin becomes dry and loose or very poor skin turgor and the eyes become soft and sunken. Other clinical manifestations include abdominal pain, especially if there is a history of alcoholism or cocaine use. Also accompanied is anorexia, nausea and vomiting. Cosmos respirations, which is rapid, deep breathing associated with dyspnea are the body's attempt to reverse metabolic acidosis through the exhalation of excess carbon dioxide. This could result in respiratory alkalosis. Acetone is noted on the breath as a sweet, fruity odor. Lab findings include blood glucose level of 250 
milligram per deciliter or higher arterial blood ph less than 7.3 serum bicarbonate level less than 16 maqs and positive ketone levels in the urine or serum when fluid and electrolyte imbalances are not severe and blood glucose levels can be safely monitored at home DKA may be managed on an outpatient basis. Other factors that are considered in decisions of where the patient is managed include the presence of fever, nausea and vomiting, and diarrhea, altered mental status, nature of the cause of the ketoacidosis, and availability of frequent communication with the healthcare provider. Patients with DKA who have an illness such as pneumonia or a urinary tract infection are usually admitted to the hospital. DKA is a serious condition that proceeds rapidly and must be treated promptly. ECG monitoring and continuous assessment of cardiac, respiratory, renal and neural function is pertinent. Assess every 15 minutes until stable. Ensure an a patent airway and administer oxygen via nasal cannula or non rebreather mask. Because fluid imbalance is potentially life-threatening, the initial goal of therapy is to establish IV access, a large bore IV access, and begin fluid and electrolyte replacement. Typically, the initial fluid therapy regimen consists of an infusion of half or full normal saline at a rate to restore urine output to 30 to 60 ml per hour and to raise the blood pressure. Accurately monitor intake and output. When blood glucose level reaches 250 mg per deciliter, 5% or 10% dextrose is added to the fluid regimen to prevent hypoglycemia, as well as a sudden drop in glucose that can be associated with cerebral edema. Overzealous rehydration, especially with hypotonic IV solutions, can result in cerebral edema. <laughs> fluid boluses with normal saline can also result in fluid overload and resulting in CHF and pulmonary edema. Assess lungs frequently while on fluid restriction. Resuscitation, sorry. Monitor patients with renal or cardiac compromise for fluid overload. Check blood sugar every hour. Measure serum potassium level before starting insulin. If the patient is hypokalemic, insulin administration will further decrease the potassium levels, making early potassium replacement essential. Although initial serum potassium, potassium levels may be normal or high, levels can decrease rapidly once therapy starts as insulin drives the potassium into the cells, leading to life-threatening hypokalemia. IV insulin administration is, is um, therapy directed towards correcting hyperglycemia and hyperketonemia. Insulin is immediately started at 0.1 unit per kilogram per hour by a continuous infusion. Many times a 0.1 units per kilogram is also given as a bolus. It is important to prevent rapid drops in serum glucose to avoid cerebral edema. Continuously monitor mental status. A blood glucose reduction of 36 to 54 mg per deciliter per hour will avoid complications, especially cerebral edema. Insulin allows water and potassium to enter the cell along with glucose and can lead to a depletion of vascular volume and hypokalemia. Therefore, monitor the patient's fluid balance and potassium levels. Signs of hypokalemia include fatigue, malaise, confusion, muscle weakness, shallow respiration, abdominal distension or paralytic ileus, hypotension, and weak pulse. Ensure adequate kidney function at least 30 ml per hour of urine before giving IV potassium. The ketone concentration in the body is increased in diabetic ketoacidosis. Accumulation of ketoacids results in an, increase, in an increased anion gap metabolic acidosis. 
Anion gap is calculated by subtracting the sum of chloride and bicarbonate concentration from the sodium concentration. Normal anion gap is 7 to 9 milliequivalents per liter and in metabolic acidosis the anion gap is greater than 10 MEQ per liter. Bicarbonate is used only for severe acidosis because it may reverse acidosis too rapidly and lead to severe hypokalemia, which can cause fatal cardiac dysrhythmias. Rapid correction can worsen patient's mental status. Acidosis is corrected by fluid replacement and insulin therapy. Sodium bicarbonate if given very slow over is given very slow over several hours when the arterial pH is 7.0 or less. And finally, it is necessary to cause to find the cause and then educate the patient and the family to prevent a, re a reoccurrence of this um, complication of diabetes.